So I finally got done cleaning my room as I've been putting it off all summer and it seemed about right to clean it to start the new school year fresh. My room isn't all that big, but big enough to take a couple of hours to clean. As I finished cleaning, I found a book lying on the floor. This book was not ordinary in a way as it did not have a title on the front nor a summary on the back. The book was about the size of any novel book but the binding and the material was not the same as it was not a paperback nor was it a hard copy. The covers of the book are made out of a leather-like material, brown in hue, and wrinkled in appearance. The binding of the book has what looks like string weaved in and out of it. I don't know where this book came from, but it seemed fairly interesting, so I opened it. The book's pages were wrinkled and had a different feel to them, sort of like parchment paper. The pages had a black lining around the edges of each page, with a small red image which I could not make out for the life of me. I continued to examine the book, and as I did I noticed something was off. What was wrong was that the pages were blank as if they had never been used. I flipped through the pages to see if there was a story or at least any writing in it, but I did not find anything until I reached the middle of the book. This page was different from all the others. It had wrinkles to it, and the entire page was black with some writing on it. The writing was in red, a deep blood-like red, as I gazed upon the page, I noticed that the light in my peripheral was getting dark. I looked up from the page and quickly looked around only to notice that my room was still lit from the sunlight coming in from the window. I looked back down at the page and I noticed that it had only two words the end. I wondered why it said the end. It was pretty odd for a book to have the words at the end if there was not a story to go with it. I continued flipping through the rest of the pages only to get a small gust of wind go past my face. I brushed it off and closed the book. I didn't care what else was in the book as from what I can see, it did not have any other writing in it. I got up and placed the book on my desk next to my laptop. I figured maybe later I could ask my mom when she got home, what she thinks the book could be. I sat down, turned on the TV and my game system, and picked up my controller to play some video games. The usual splash screens appeared and I began to play my game, but shortly after I noticed that the controller was no longer responding, I figured well, maybe the batteries in the controller were dead. I looked down at the controller to view the indicator lights, but the light was still green. Nothing out of the ordinary, so I pressed the guide button to see where the battery level was at, but the guide showed that the batteries were still good. I didn't worry because this happened because technology is never truly consistent. That's when I got up and walked to the kitchen to grab some spare batteries out of the remote. As I walked out of my room and into the hallway, I heard what sounded like tapping from the controller. I turned around, walked back into my room to see if maybe the controller fell from where I was. But no, it was still in the same position I left it in. I left the room again and proceeded down the hall and into the kitchen to grab the batteries out of the spare remote. Now I was sure these batteries were good as I just placed them in earlier this morning. I walked over to the counter and picked up the remote. I opened the back of the remote and pried out the batteries with my fingernails, closed the back of the remote again and then sat the remote back down. I turned around and proceeded back out of the kitchen and down the hall. 
I walked back into my room and sat down and picked up my controller, opened the back and replaced the batteries. I turned the controller back on and went back to playing. But not long afterwards I noticed it started to become unresponsive again. So I hit the controller a few times with my hand hoping maybe that would help. But no it only made it worse as now the character was moving all by itself. But something was off though the character was fully interacting with the environment shooting at the opposing team, picking up power-ups and the like. I sat and watched wondering what was going on and then nothing, pure darkness. The power went out and I thought to myself if the controller is not acting right, then the house is not acting right. I got up and went to the window to see if our house was the only one without power, but I couldn't see out of the window. The news didn't discuss a storm moving through or rolling blackouts, but sure enough the sky was as dark as I think it could ever get and the visibility was poor. I grabbed my phone from my desk and turned on the flashlight app and left my room. As I walked down the hall I felt a presence, not the normal I'm the only one in the house, and the power is out it's about to get weird presence, but the someone else behind me presence. I stopped where I was at and turned around hoping that the feeling would go away. As I turned slowly I felt as if the house was getting darker and the energy around me got slower. Almost as if I was moving through thick sugar, I finally turned around and saw that there was nobody behind me which was weird. I could have sworn someone was behind me. I turned back around and continued down the hallway, getting closer and closer to the living room. As I got closer to the living room, the feeling just got stronger. The house got even darker. There was not only a sensation that there was someone behind me, but a heavy feeling. A hard to describe feeling as if someone placed me in a neck deep pool with molasses and made me walk through it. I shook the feeling off and kept going thinking it was all in my head. I finally got to the living room and I noticed my head was pounding. I don't truly get headaches, but today of old days I get a headache. It was as if I got hit with a Louisville slugger in the head. I tried to shake it off, but not this time. I turned the flashlight app up brighter so I could see better, but it did not help. I continued walking through the living room only to see something dart from the corner of my eye. It was extremely fast. I looked in the direction of where it was shining the light, but nothing was there. As I was looking in that direction, I saw something dart again but this time it was accompanied by pressure on my wrist and neck. It was a strange feeling. The sensation appeared out of nowhere and hurt pretty badly. I looked around and didn't notice anything at first until I saw it. It was tall, roughly eight feet in height and slightly skinny. I could not see what it was nor its face. All I could see was a tall, dark, humanoid silhouette. It gave off a faint but recognizable smell of dragon's blood. The longer I looked at the shadow, the longer I felt compelled to move closer. It felt like I was in a daze. I knew I was looking at it, but I didn't know why. The smell drew me in and its sheer presence did the same. I started walking slowly to it until I realized that it wasn't me that was doing this of my own will. I quickly snapped out of it and ran back into my room, closing and locking the door behind me. I turned around from the door into the center of my room only to see the book lying on my bed with it opened to the middle of the book where the words the end was. I looked at the page 
and noticed something sitting on top of the page. I walked over to the book and saw that it was a small gemstone. From the looks of it, it looked like a bloodstone. Where it came from I don't know, but it was not there before. I didn't hesitate to throw the book and the gemstone on the floor. Not knowing what to do next, I did the only thing I could do. I'd, I hastily walked to my closet and proceeded to open, and as I opened it I was greeted once again by this tall dark figure. I looked up at it this time, not being able to look away. I felt myself this time moving towards the figure slowly, but at the same time gradually picking up speed. As I got closer to the figure, the smell of dragon's blood grew stronger and stronger. I was afraid of what was going to happen, so I closed my eyes praying, hoping that this wouldn't be it. As I got closer, something happened. The lights came back on and my parents were standing next to me asking me why I was staring into the closet. I did not know what to tell them. How do I explain to them what has transpired without looking crazy? I just looked at them until the thought ran across my mind about the book. I looked around for the book and I couldn't find it anywhere. I looked at my parents and asked them what happened to the book that I had. My parents looked at me and asked, what book? I told them that I had found a book that was made out of leather and that had weird pieces of paper in it. My mom didn't say anything, but just looked at me and walked out. But my dad told me that the book I was describing belonged to his father's father, and the book was stored in the attic. He told me that it was a book that's not meant for reading, and he left my room. I looked at him puzzled and sat down on my bed, wondering what he meant by that. Later that night I was getting ready to go to bed. I've just taken my shower, put on my pajamas, and was getting ready to lie down, until I noticed that the book was sitting back on my bed. I didn't want to open it or look at it. I just wanted to go to bed. I placed the book on my desk, hopped in the bed, and got underneath the covers and went to sleep. I did not have pleasant dreams. It was nothing but a nightmare. One nightmare after another until I woke up with tears running down my face. I looked around and took a deep sigh of relief in which I noticed my throat was dry. I tried to get up, but I couldn't. My body wouldn't move. My hands and feet were tingling and I couldn't open my mouth. It felt as if someone or something were holding me down to my bed. I tried with all my might to get up, but I couldn't. I tried to call for help but words would not form as my mouth would not open. I then noticed something at the foot of my bed. It was tall and dark. I stared at it for a second, hoping for my eyes to adjust in which they did. And that's when I noticed it was the same dark figure I encountered earlier. I couldn't move, I couldn't scream, I couldn't do anything but stare. I looked at it but didn't feel anything like I did before. I closed my eyes tight, hoping for it to all be a nightmare. I took a deep breath and opened them, only to see it now standing over me. All I could see on it was a smile and teeth, sharp, razor-like teeth. Its teeth were red in color. I just laid there and stared as I stared. The overwhelming smell of dragon's blood came back along with the headache and the feeling of a pressure on my wrist and neck. The only sensation I got, the only emotion I felt was dread. All I could do was close my eyes with the image of its smiling. Razor-sharp teeth burned into my mind forever.